Welcome back, everybody. Folks, my first guest tonight is an Academy Award nominee whose new film is Beatriz at Dinner. You think killing is hard, huh? You wait in the bushes, the animal might outrun you or charge you. It's not easy to get your shot, hmm? Try healing something. That is hard. That requires patience. You can break something in two seconds. But it can take forever to fix it. Please welcome Salma Hayek Pinot. <laughs> Nice to have you on. I am so excited to be here. I've wanted to have you on any show that I'm doing for a long time. We met once backstage at uh, Global Citizen the Global Concert. Citizens last yes. year. Exactly. And we had fun. We were rocking there. No, you seem like a very fun person. I am. Well, and, 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 and uh, you've you proved it. This so is you. Shocked. Is this on the red carpet at uh, Cannes? Is this yes. where you have the pink hair? Yes. Why no more pink hair? I love the pink hair. Well, we can try it on next time I come. I kept the wig. It's somewhere in there. Did it freak out? You have a daughter, right? It freaked everyone out. Because <laughs> especially, especially kids don't want to see no, their... my their... husband. No, she was cool. She was like, and I wear it after you, but m my husband was like, do you really, are you sure you want to do this? He was, I think I embarrassed him a little bit, but then it worked out. Everybody was there, and he couldn't believe that I actually pulled it off. I do that all the time, I surprise him. Well, uh, this year there were a lot of uh, Latino and Hispanic artists at, uh, at Cannes. There, uh, Guillermo del Toro was there, and Gal Garcia Bernal, and Diego Luna, and you. I was it nice so to see to, and uh, see people I was representing? So, I was so moved because we went to take a picture, and I th they told me family picture. I thought it was a picture of me and my husband, and all of a sudden I see a hundred of the most amazing minds of cinema for so many different generations and different countries there. And I realized that out of these hundred people from all over the world, at least 10% were Latinos. Most of the 10% were Mexican, and they were my friends. And I felt such a sense of pride, and I was so moved that I went crazy. I'm sorry, you went crazy? I went crazy. And this is at 3 o'clock in the afternoon, and I say to my husband, again, I, this is it's another one when he, he just goes, did I really hear what she just said? We need to bring a mariachi tonight. Because it was the 17th anniversary of Cannes. It's like, it's a big gala, very elegant. You, we can't walk in with a mariachi. Oh, yes, we can, baby. I know how to do this. But wait, and we need to bring find... tequila and mezcal. OK, but you're in, you're, you're, you're in Cannes. That's like, where do you find said. a mariachi band? Where are you going to find a mariachi in Cannes? Yeah. You don't. You fly them in from Paris. <laughs> Paris, and of hurry course. up because <laughs> the dinner is very soon. Paris, of course, the, the of home course. of the finest mariachi players. Actually, there's some. There's baby, some... baby, we're everywhere. <laughs> there's some really good, talented mariachis in Paris. In Paris, really? Okay, so, so you get you, you 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 scare one up on the phone and then you fly him down. No plane tickets available. We had to go to Marseille, then drive them in, find a hotel, look in all the bars for all the remains of mezcal and tequila in every single bar of the place. It was a big production, thing. and then finally, my my husband was like, "Oh my God, which is crazy! How is she?" And then finally. I come in, I waited for some of the boring people to go home. They go home earlier. Boring people go home? Yes. Yeah, uh -huh. And then the mariachi walks in, and it was amazing. Everybody went crazy. It was a huge success. Everybody was trying to be Mexican, pretending to be Mexican. <laughs> they were pretending. They were, like, drunk with the tequila, pretending to be singing, in, know the songs and singing in Spanish, you know? I saw one European, very famous person going, Ay, 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 cerveza, cerveza, taco, Cancún enchilada, chiquita banana, hasta la vista, baby. Well, we, there's, actually, we have footage of this moment. 
Uh, not that moment. We have a first moment <laughs> with this, Guillermo del Toro. Before they were all sitting down very elegantly, and then it turned into a cantina, the 17th anniversary mm -hmm. of her. How did the French take it? They loved it. Oh, they yeah. were so great. They were singing well, and dancing. Now, your daughter Valentina, who's nine, uh, does she take after you or take after your husband? Because your husband is a, is a businessman, right? My, my husband is a businessman. She takes after a little bit of both. She goes through phases. Right now, she's really into my husband's jeans face. She's really a, quite an entrepreneur. Is she running a business? Yes, she's running a business with her slime. I forbid her to, to sell it. Wait, sorry, so I'm with her what? Slime. She makes slime in my kitchen. She's taking over the kitchen. Oh, like the stuff the kids play with, like the... Yes, yes. Yeah. The, she makes them, and she has all these different recipes, and she experiments, and... I mean, it's a big production. I have, like, a whole closet full of slime. I mean, we are swimming in slime in my house. So, and then she sells it? Is there a black market for slime I don't know about? Well, I never... Th I, I hope I'm... You know, not because of you, I'm going to go to jail for not paying taxes on the smile the line we're selling in the house. No, I'll get you a good lawyer. I'll get you okay. a good lawyer. Okay. Because um, I, I banded her for selling it in the school, which was a terrible thing because my husband, I, I tried to get him to be on my side and tell her not to do it. And she was like, well, how much are you selling it for? And then, you know, how much is the material? You're selling it for too little. You have to sell it for more. <laughs> so it, it was not a good idea. And now you know what she's doing? She is getting anybody that comes into my house, a delivery person, they come to bring the groceries. Do you want some slime? And she's like selling, selling at any opportunity. Today she called because he, you know, my, my husband is going back and see her today and she's like, you have to get me this glue from the States because it's better than this thing and this thing and can I please buy these materials? And, and I'm like, and he goes, as long as you pay back with your revenues. <laughs> So they continue this oh, wow. horrific well, conversation. You've explained to her about lemonade stands, right? Yeah, she did that when she was six. She's like growing. The business is growing. So what did she get? What, what, did, what did you give her? Like, what did she get from mom? She obviously got the business acumen from dad. What did you, what did you pass down to your child? Yeah, she's incredibly talented. Okay. Unfortunately... <laughs> Don't back down. Don't back down. Don't back down. That, that's not what I meant. I was going to say... You know, despite the fact that she's incredibly talented, unfortunately, she inherited my stage fright. You have stage fright? Mm -hmm. But you, how can an actress I was terrified have... of all you before I came out. <laughs> why do you have stage fright? You're a, you're a brilliant actress. Why, why would you have stage fright? Um, I don't know. Like, that's like a shrink question. I've tried to... <laughs> well, let's talk about your childhood, <laughs> Selma. <laughs> so, you gotta go here just a minute, but I wanna ask you about the movie uh, in uh, Beatriz. Uh, this movie was dreamt up before Donald Trump was president. Right. And yet you, you play, uh, are you playing an Mexican American uh, sort of a physical therapist like masseuse uh -huh. and healer? Uh -huh. Who comes to a very rich person's home uh -huh. and the guy, if I'm not mistaken, he is a hotel magnate who hunts big game. He's a guest of the, of the house. I get stuck in this dinner mm -hmm. and uh, they get stuck with me. And yes, he, he, he's that kind of guy. Is it based on Donald Trump? <laughs> it was originally based on the guy, the, the dentist that killed uh, Cecil the lion. Oh, I remember yeah, the dentist from mm -hmm. Minnesota or something mm -hmm. shot Cecil and the lion. And then yeah. he did a recopilation of this type of people, Mike White, genius uh, writer. Uh, but then I think he's psychic or something because as the time keeps going by, it, it just uh, keeps feeling re really strange, this movie, how many things you see in the news, and it could have been at that dinner. And it's very relevant to the times. Uh, so it, it, it's a lot like Donald Trump, but it was not made for him. It was made for me. <laughs> well, Salma, thank you so much thank for being so here. Much. It was lovely to finally talk to you. Beatriz at Dinner is in theaters this Friday. Salma Hayek Pino, everybody. We'll be right back.